2016. Ellie. Which in French means she or her. Um, I was going to watch it, but... See, Channel 4 has it, and their description is, it's a French movie with rape. But then that's all they ever promote is sexual violence. Um, I'm going to read the plot because it is funny. It ticks every woke box that it can. It's made by a guy who's not French. He's never made a French film before. But, you know, the director of poor Fihilien started to make it in French. The woman who stars in it, it's, um, oh yeah, don't get it confused with Ellen Enchanted, that's a completely different movie. This stars Isabella Hubbard. And yes, there are nude scenes. Yes, she is raped. Yes, there are sexual violence. But let's face it, yes, she gets her baps out. She's in her 60s in this. In 2016, she would have been mid-60s. And... But she's what she is. She's she's a woman in her mid-60s that has not had surgery. So, I mean, she's famous for going naked. She's famous for doing, like, sex-type movies. Um, even in the 50s and 60s and 70s when she was going naked as a teenager, her body wasn't that good. And now it hasn't improved with age. Anyhow, the, the plot is it, basically, I'm a rich, powerful woman, and all men either hate me or want to rape me. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a very common stereotype story. I'm not talking about the reading the entire plot line. Okay, the plot. I started reading it, I just thought it was so funny. Michel Leblanc is raped in your home by an assailant in a skin mask. I'm not going to go into a lower, low accent. She then cleans up the mess and resumes her life. Like, why wouldn't you? She is the head of a successful video game company where her male employees are alternatively resentful of or infatuated with her. That, that, that's called female ego, not reality. Especially when it's a woman in her 60s. You might get that if the woman is in her 20s or 30s or 40s or maybe 50, but you sure as hell wouldn't get it somebody who's like a decade past claiming their bus pass. Anyhow, with, with her, she carries on an affair with Robert. The husband of her friend and business partner. Uh-huh. We, 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 we have already established she's a bitch. Um, and flirts with her married neighbour, Patrick. She's an extra bitch. Michelle feels detached from her son, Vincent, because she's too busy fucking everybody else or trying to fuck everybody else or hating people who do not want to they fuck here. Who submits to his abusive pregnant girlfriend, Jesse? I was surprised. The son likes to get abused by his girlfriend when he's got an abusive mummy. Wow, whatever that got learned from. She has a contentious relationship with her mama, Irene, whom she resents for her narcissism and involvement with younger men. Furthermore, she is the daughter of an infamous mass murderer whose terror hearing is approaching. Haunted by her father's actions, Michelle is wary of law enforcement and does not report her rapey to the police. So basically, she's a bitch. She's constantly trying to shag up other people. She's abusive toward men. And as far as she is concerned, if a man doesn't want to fuck her, then he's horrible and hates her. That's just her opinion, not reality. Most men don't notice women exist unless they're actually within their sphere of influence. Michelle grows increasingly suspicious of the men in her life. She receives harassing text messages from her assailant at a blocked number, indicating he is stalking her. Well, if, she, if he's already raped her in her home, then obviously he's stalking her. As far as stalking got changed to a criminal offence a long time ago, although people seem to have forgotten. Because stalking is involved in 99% of all murders and rapes. Anywho, she at first suspects Kurt, a particularly resentful employee, when a CGI animation of a monster raping her is emailed to everybody at the company. <laughs> she pepper sprays a man looking outside her house, only to find out it's her ex-husband, Ricardo, who has been checking on her safety. So basically, the, the, the 
guys that she thinks are evil are actually good. She later discovers that another employee, who has been infatuated with Hiara, created the animation but not rape her. So she's blaming people who didn't do stuff for stuff they haven't done. On Christmas Eve, Irene suffers a stroke and begs her daughter to go see her father before she dies in hospital. Michelle is later attacked in her home by the assailant and, after stabbing his hand and unmasking him, learns that he is Patrick. Though she now knows his identity and realises that he's able to enter her home despite having her locks changed, she still does not call the police and takes no measures to increase her home security, which would tend to imply that she enjoys it. Now, I'm not saying that people who, women like being raped, but I've been with different types of women over the years. I'm in my 50s. I've been celibate for the past decade, but I've had a fair few. And it's different walks of life, some that were from normal life backgrounds, some who were from affluent, middle class, different nationalities, different, um, like I say, colour schemes, we've all been fairly white, but different socioeconomic backgrounds, different, I mean, East German, for crying out loud, you know, communist, you know, that, 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 Nazi, for fuck's sake, to, like, screw a corpse, like Irish, but... Every single one has liked the fantasy about being forced, being restrained, being dominated. <coughs> Excuse me. And this does kind of come through this little bit of the story. And um, the fact that she's been raped once and attacked again by the same person in her house. And she does nothing to stop him doing it. She's not... I mean, if, if that's happening... You go and get yourself a couple of bolts and a piece of wood and you know a door shut at night. The fact that she's not doing anything to stop it means she's actively encouraging it. Anyhow, and she just doesn't report it or complain. Michelle decides to visit her papa. Hello, papa. After his parole application is rejected, only to find that he has hanged himself hours before she arrives. On the way home from prison, she gets into a car crash in a secluded area. Rather than calling an ambulance, she first tries to call her prance, and then decides to call Patrick. After he rescues her from the car and bandages here, Michelle cuts a brazen, a dangerously sexual relationship with him. She engages in a vivid rape scenario with him. The two of them walk a delicate line in which Patrick has to feel as though he is raping Michelle even though she consents to the role play, which is what I just fucking said. Um, Michelle grows... In, so she got raped. And she liked it. Was that, that song? Uh, what was that song? Um, I kissed a boy and I liked it. You know, he raped me twice and I liked it. Uh, <laughs> um, Michelle grows increasingly disillusioned with her life leading up to the launch party for her company's new video game. Oh yeah, I forgot she had a video game company. She confesses to Anna that she's been shagging her husband. As Patrick drives her home, Michelle professes that she is no longer in denial about their unhealthy relationship and claims she intends to call the police. But you've been consenting to it and now you want to grass him up. She takes her time walking in front of his parked car after guessing out and then makes a point of leaving her gates unlocked. So she's basically prick teasing him to come and rape her again. After saying that she's going to call the cops, Patrick enters and attacks her in an ambiguous encounter that blurs the line between rape and consent. Why is it highlighted with a link? But Vincent, who was already in the house, sneaks up behind Patrick and bashes him on the back of the skull. Michelle appeals to remain largely composed, but Patrick Lee is seemingly confused as he dies. Michelle speaks briefly with Patrick's wife, Rebecca. Who the fuck are we talking about? Patrick? Who was, who was she shagging? So Patrick's the one who's been raping her. Um, Vincent killed him. Vincent killed him. And now he's talking to Patrick's... She's talking to Patrick's wife. And she's moving out of the neighbourhood. Rebecca is placid and expresses gratitude to Michelle 
for being able to temporarily satisfy Patrick's needs, implying that she was aware on some level that the two were sexually involved and that Patrick had inclinations she couldn't satisfy. So the, the woman is thanking her for allowing him to rape her. While Michelle reconciles with both Josie and Anna, who the fuck are they? Well, the latter offers to move in with her. Now they have both separate relations. So, oh, for fuck's sake. So basically, she told Anna, Anna, I've been fucking your husband. Okay, I'll dump him and move in with you. So they are lesbian happily ever after. Yeah, um, I've got no fucking interest at all in watching that. that that's just... Nah. I mean, if you consider that things like rape and her being a known name, like in France anyway, and for a lot of nonce TV because she did a lot of new stuff when she was Jabo, would have gotten a fair bit of attention. It still only just broke even. They had a budget of 9.1 mil, it made 12.7. And that was pretty much going to be just based on her aging fan base. And the fact that it's got rape in the uh, description. Yeah, I've no interest in watching that crap. I said, hell of a good Photoshop picture of her. I mean, seriously. Oh, well, that's a really good zoom in. Yeah, trying to make her look like she's 20, 30, as opposed to not far off 70. Yeah, that's, that's a movie I'm never going to watch. But, you know, fuck it. Interesting, funny, and um, yeah, it ticks all the woke boxes. I wonder if Patrick was black. <laughs>